What's the word? It's Director BLB coming at y'all today with the tutorial on the demon eye, changing the eyeball effect. So today we're going to show you guys how to do that and motion track as well. Stay tuned. So here we go going down here. I already got the footage. So I'm going to just look for one little simple part with his eyes looking up. Okay, that little groove right there. Right here, from here. Boom. From there, I'm going to make a cut. Bam, 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 bam. See it? See how, you, see how you blink? We're going to just do it right before he blink. Now we set the timeline out. You can see it's a couple frames. And what you're going to do is right click, replace with effects, after effects composition. And then from there, just tighten it with the songism. Tighten a little. Got it. Bam. It's going to come up automatically. Boom. So what you do is. You just take both fingers, just stretch it out a little bit. Now, as you stretch it out, you see it start going down. So you have to hit the H clip, H key. My bad. Bring it up. Then from there, hit the V key again. So what we're going to do is go to our layer. We need to create a layer, which is a solid. Go to the solids, and here we can change the color. Um, I'm going to make the color white. Let's make it white. And what we're going to do is make it white. Okay. So next thing we do, we hit our G key. That's for to make our cut for the marker. Now let's just cut out an eye. See like that? Make it shape of an eye. You might do like five or six points. Just like that. Boom. See that? Now you hit the V key. So you can drag it over. Alright, now here's what we put in the work. Oh, next thing we're gonna do actually make sure you change the um you know, change it to chord instead of four, the resolution. That way, it won't be so choppy and slow as you plan it. So, next thing we're going to do is click on this, our white solid. Hit Command C for copy, Command V. <clears throat> next thing we're going to do, of course, we got to bring that over. So, now that we got these, we're going to go in and we're going to shape the eye up. Now, of course, this is how you drag it. Hit V again. Let's click on the top one. Now the top one is right. Oh, my bad. The top one is the right one. The bottom one is the left one. All right. So let's highlight this bottom one. And let's bring this little dot over right here. Bring this dot down right here. Bring this dot down right here. Bring the dot over right here. Bring this dot right here. And then bring, see that? Just shape it up. I think that's pretty cool. I think this one might be a little yeah, that's over. Okay. I know the footage look a little jet. Let me change it to half. Okay, cool. Now it looks a little better. So you see how I cover the eyelid? I might need to bring it down just a little bit. Always have it just a little bit over the eye. That way when you feather it, that's gonna be our next step. When you feather it, it's gonna have that smooth cut around it. So Line it up right there, same thing. Look and see where the eye is, bam. Then you bring that up right here. And then you bring it up right here. See this little black showing, so we're gonna bring it down. So now that we got the eye shaped up, next thing we're gonna do is hit this arrow down here, go to mask, go to mask one, and we're gonna hit this command key. That activates our motion tracking. The next thing we're going to do is going to go to feather. This one, you see how it disappears like that? I would say keep the feather right around 19, 20, somewhere around there. You go 30, but of course it won't show. So don't have it at 1 or 2 because it's going to make the edges too sharp. You want to have it feathered, like a little fade. So I would say in between 14 and... I say four, I say 15. So we're 15. That's for the right eye. Uh, also, inside this mask, I mean, I mean, inside this footage right here, you're gonna go to transform. Transform. We're gonna have the. We're gonna activate the command key for the position. So position is every time he moves his face, we're gonna drag it over and um, set keyframe points so it can stay on track. So. We're going to go to the second eye, well, which is the left eye. Going to go to mask, go down a mask path, 
feather at about 14 again. We're going to look and see how it looks. It looks pretty cool. I think we might have to touch it up right here a bit. Sometimes you have to do that. Nothing wrong with that. Then from here, go to transform. Always make sure you hit transform. Okay, now we hit position. Now we're activated. Here's where we do our motion tracking. Make sure you hit your plus sign so you can stretch out the timeline. That's where the timeline is longer. So, you, so you're going by each frame. Due to how he's not moving too much, I can go every four frames. So one, two, three, four. I, I make it five frames. Every five frames, I'm going to have to shape it back up. So five frames. Man, here we go. All right. You see how he moved it? You see how the eyes right here? All we got to do is do what? My bad. Got to kind of double click on it a little bit. Sometimes it acts weird. Drag it, highlight it, click on it, match it up. Boom, let it go. Boom, same thing over here. Bring it over, match it up. All right, let's go to five more frames later. Bam. Again. Oh, see, it did that. Sometimes it do it. Weird. Acting up. And it's right here. Got to just sometimes double click on it. Oh, shoot. Sometimes act weird. Yeah, you got to just grab it. Bam. Go to the next frame. Next five frames over. Why does it do that? Sometimes I have to zoom in more so it's more space. It kind of does go weird. Hit H to grab. All right. There we go. Now we're a little tighter in. All right. Yeah, sometimes it makes an accident by uh, grabbing one of these little dots like that just because it's so small when you don't have it zoomed in. So go to the next five frames over. Hit the H key again. See, V is for point, H is for the grab, so you can grab it over. So hit V again. Always remember, remember to hit V. Bring this over here. I know some of you guys like, oh, can't you just do it the easier way with rotoscoping? Trust me. This this would be so fast. This way is so fast that you that you won't even have to use it. You only use all that rotoscope and stuff when you really really know you're doing some extensive, you know, keyframing and all this kind of stuff, motion tracking. You don't have to do it with this. It's just like simple. And then you see how it's a little above the eye, so I can shape it up. Cause remember, I had did our key command. And with the key command for when I activated for the mask path, the mask path is how you shape up the mask. So these are each dots and stuff. You can um, you know, change the formation of that. So now we did both eyes. Let's go back to the beginning and let's click play and see how it looks. Actually, let's shrink it. You gotta take both fingers on the um on your keypad and then bring it in. Alright. So now we're gonna shrink it, grab it so we can see our footage. Make sure nothing's highlighted. So it might be off for a few frames, but let's just look at it. Okay, it went off. That's probably because we skipped you know, a couple frames. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in between the frame. Bam. That's all you got to do is just go back. I always tell people, if it can be done fast, then it's not worth paying for. So it, it take a little bit of time. But it's nothing wrong with it taking time. If it took you uh, three days to edit, if it took you two months to edit, that don't make it no difference. The only thing the consumers remember is you know the actual video quality so i see a lot of people who, who yeah they can get a video done in three days that's cool but if it ain't fired it don't mean shit i tell you just like that so i'm gonna go in between see i know where where to be messed up at so we probably could have went every three frames but it's nothing wrong with that let's just let's just go fix it that's all it's quick see how fast we went back and did that easy See, it's not. See that one. See, it look a little off. Sometimes it go off like that because of the movement and things like that. So right here, he had a little bit of movement. So we're gonna bring it up where it went off. Just a little bit, just to adjust it. Then we're gonna go back and look again. Just scrub again. We can tell where it's messed up at. And now as we're looking at it, it ain't too much. See, I bring that down a little bit. And I'm just being picky with it. See that? We good money. We good. A little slipped a little bit right there. You see? That slipped a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. 
But you don't have to do every frame. Because every frame, you're not going to be able to match it up in the same exact spot you put it. That's why you don't do every frame. So now, we're about to shrink it back again. Go back down on side. Actually, a lot of, you know, another way is just hit the 100% hit the key. Now, we playing it. Look at it. Woo! Smooth. Smooth. All right. Now, as we look back in our premiere, look what it did. It just did that clip. See that? So if you was doing a music video, you don't have to throw the whole entire you know, clip of that you know, scene. All you have to do is throw in what you need. Only throw in what you need. That's why it's so easy to use After Effects with Adobe Premiere. Because now I'm using After Effects as... An effects program, you know, by itself. Same way you do with <clears throat> my bad. So I'm using After Effects the same way I use, um, like any other effect. Like I got um, Mojo, Magic Bullet, I got Sapphire, you know, those type of effects. So I'm just using it, you know, as just an effect itself, not as a whole program. And that's how you use it. And this is the effect. And then from here, of course, you render it. I always tell people only only use only put what in the, uh, inside the After Effects program. Only put what you're gonna use inside there. I know a lot of guys they'll throw their entire sequence inside of After Effects from Premiere, but that's not what you do. You only put in the little parts that you need to do. That's it. So all we all we need to do is put that in there. Then you render it to work a little fast and boom we good see what i'm saying and like i said it's it's some points where i see it might have went off a little bit but overall consumer ain't gonna see that uh here's another treat for it um i'm gonna put a flicker effect on it and this flicker effect um i use sapphire so if you guys get a hold of sapphire it's a dope program uh it's five hundred dollars per year instead of paying a two thousand dollars so it's 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 not bad i like it i use it for a lot of my flickers i go up here i turn this up i turn that up click on this one turn this one up turn that one up and then when it flicker it, it, it actually kind of confuses the consumer on whether it's on point or not see what i'm saying but i gotta turn that down a little bit make it dope so when it's blinking, it make it dope. And of course, when you make a change inside of After Effects, it changes inside of Premiere. That's the beauty of Premiere and After Effects. That's why I use them together. See what I'm saying? Easy. And that was our tutorial with the eyeball effect, the demon eye effect, how to change the color. Make sure you guys understand how important it is to prep your footage. That means when you're filming, with your artist, if you know you're going to change his eye color, make sure they're not moving around too much. You know, of course, you can cheat it or you can make it easy for yourself by them wearing contacts. But if you want their whole eyeball bloodshot red, this is the effect to do. From there, all you have to do is make sure they don't move too much. That way, it won't be hard on you to motion track it. And only, remember, only put what you need in After Effects. That one little clip. If it's a part where you know like the eye's not showing, you don't have to put that in After Effects. So just put that small little clip, just those seven frames, five frames, ten frames, but not the whole entire video. That's how you make your job easy. All right? Stay tuned. Next effect we're going to have is the coloring. I'm going to do color grading because one of my guys asked my coloring. So we're going to do color grading and show you how to do it and show you guys what I use to color grade as well. Stay tuned.